All right, I kind of a really cool problem for you today. So here we're going to look at the problem of supposing that C is a CFL, so a context-free language, and R being a regular language. And what we're going to do today is show that C intersection with R is a context-free language. Now, the usual method that most people appeal to is to use a PDA for the context-free language C and a DFA for the regular language R and then doing a product type construction and we've done a video about that before to give us a PDA for the intersection of the two. But here what we're going to insist is that we don't use a PDA. So Recall that the only other model of computation for the context-free languages that is usually taught is a CFG. So let's let G be a CFG for the language C. Okay, and let's also let D be a DFA for the regular language R because it's a regular language, there must exist a DFA for it. So here, we're not only going to not make a PDA out of it, we're also, um, yes, yeah, so we're not gonna make a PDA out of it. We uh, started with the CFG, we're going to make a CFG. So uh, here's what one method you may try if we wanna make a CFG for the intersection of the two. One method may say, well, we can just do a product type construction with variables and states of the CFG and the DFA, and then just try to model it based off of that. Well, I invite you to figure to try that approach. It actually is quite difficult to do, and it turns out to uh, not be nearly as easy as this one. So, if you recall the, so let's put a little thought bubble over here. So if we, if you recall the PDA to CFG conversion, one of the steps that we had was when in the PDA, it can have a bunch of states, but at the end, we had all of the originally final states go to a single final state. And the reason for that was that whenever we wanted to make the starts the the start variable of the CFG, we needed a state of the form a q zero comma q f, all of the states that take us from the start state to the single final state. Well, in general, the DFA for R here may or may not have a single final state or not. So let's let n be uh, derived from D uh, having exactly one final state. Okay, so that, that's, uh, it'll mirror the same idea as before. And the, uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to simplify the CFG by supposing that it is in CNF. And the reason for that is going to be clear in that when we're going to make all of the variables and the rules in the resulting grammar, it's going to be far easier. So let's figure out what we're going to do here. So what we're going to model this as, we're going to have the variables in G prime, the resulting grammar. So I'm going to call the grammar that is the intersection of the two C intersection R to be G prime. That's what I'm going to call it. And we'll, so the variables will be of the form Q I A Q J. So here, what I'm interpret, what we're going to interpret this as is the Qs are states in the NFA we just made N, and 
the variable a right here is, well, <laughs> a variable in the grammar g that's in CNF. And what we want this to mean, so what we want out of this is qi a q j is going to generate all strings such that such that a can derive the string because um, at the end we're going to have um, a pair of states for the NFA as well as the strings that can be derived from the start variable and we want the, this triple right here to generate the strings that belong to both of those cases because we're doing the intersection here. So we want to generate all strings such that A could generate, can derive the string and uh, starting at QI, reading the string uh, goes to QJ. Or QJ, uh, I should be more precise in that QJ is one of the states you can get to after reading whatever the string is. Okay, so what are the variables? Uh, formally, it's going to be Q cross V cross Q. The, the order doesn't actually uh, matter here, by the way. Um, as long as we capture the beginning and the end state, as well as one of the variables, that's what matters. So Q, of course, is going to be states in N, and the V here is the variables of the original grammar G. Cool. So then the start variable is going to be Q0, uh, and then the second coordinate will be the start variable of the original grammar. And then the final state, the, the third thing in the triplet will be the single final state in the DFA. So this is the start, I should say NFA. So start state of NFA N, this is the final, the only final state of n and the s in the middle is the start variable of g of the grammar g okay well let's see so there are three possible cases now because of the restriction that we have the grammar b in cnf so remember that a grammar in cnf let's put a little thought bubble here so CNF says that a grammar can only have one of the three following variable types. A goes to B, C, where B and C are not the start variable. Uh, a goes to a single terminal X, so X is a terminal, so just a single character. And S goes to epsilon, where S is the start variable, of course. So let's handle each of those at once. So let's do, let's see, let's do S goes to epsilon a rule in G. So if it is a rule in G, then we will add this rule, which is this. So for each um, pair Q, I, Q, J, in the set of states of the NFA, such that uh, QI is reachable, uh, sorry, QJ is reachable from QI on epsilon. Then we'll add the rule, which is, so I'm going to change it in red so we know it's the rule. So QI S QJ goes to epsilon. So it says, um, what could S generate as well as what could QI to QJ make? Well, 
because of the condition we're enforcing here that QJ is um, a, a transition from QI on epsilon and S can make epsilon directly, well, we got to add this rule in because S can make epsilon and QI can go to QJ on epsilon. So that's the, the easiest case. So let's do the A to X case. So if A to X is a rule in G, then we're going to add, add this rule. So it's going to be almost identical. So for each QI, QJ in, I'll, I'll be more formal, in the set of states Q, such that now it's going to be a little different, such that QJ is reachable from QI on X this time. So it's not epsilon. Maybe I'll change it to a different color. So here we got to be able to get to QJ from X, from uh, reading in X from QI. And this is fine because each transition of the NFA has one character. And because the grammar's in CNF, we only can have one character on the right side anyway. So this is fine here. So then we'll add the rule QI A QJ goes to X. So the logic behind this is almost identical to the one we just did. And then now for the third type, A goes to B C A rule in G. So let's see. Well, in order to, so we can actually think of the PDA to CFG conversion again. So one of the rules that we had to make for the PDA to CFG conversion is A, Q, I, Q, maybe I'll, I'll remove the Q subscript here to make things easier to see. So let's say that we have P, Q, I got to go from state P to state Q, and then I could possibly go to any state R in the middle. So this is saying that if I can get from state P to state R and from state R to state Q, then I certainly can get from P to Q. So how can we accomplish this here? How can we make this easier? Well, we got to start at a state here. Then we got to go to a state here after uh, reading a string that B can generate. And then we got to go to a state here after reading the C part. So what we're going to do is add the following rule for each. Now we need three states, not two states. And they can all be the same, could all be different. But so for each triplet of states in the NFA, and they may or may not be adjacent to each other because we may need to generate a, a whole gigantic string from each of the two variables B and C. We don't know necessarily, but as long as I can uh, get from QI to QJ and from QJ to QK, then we are fine. So the way to view this is QI is my starting point and Q k is my destination and q j in the middle is just a you can think of it like a hop over state so if i can get to that state and from the middle one to the end then we are all set so what rule are we going to add well we still have the variable a on the left side so if i can get from q i to q k and, uh, sorry, if I, I want to get from QI to QK, as well as express the strings that A can make. Well, one way to do that is just to say, well, I can stop at any state in the middle that I want to. So then I can just say, well, QI going to QJ, as well as getting a string that B can make. And then, right after that, concatenate that with some string that takes us from QJ to QK, as well as 
what the variable C could also make. So we're going to add a rule of this form. And based on all of the discussion we just had, this CFG, so uh, this CFG has the language C intersection R because, well, we're just mimicking what the CFG would have done as well as at the same time doing what the, the NFA in this case would have done. So I hope that was interesting. Please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.